welcome to the second episode of DeFi Explained by Apollo Capital. My name is David Anglis. I'm an analyst at Apollo Capital and I joined in early this year in July. I work very closely alongside the investment team and previously I held a position at PwC in technology consulting for three and a half years. I've always had a passion for blockchains uh, and crypto assets and I'm very excited to introduce this morning's topic of uh, block explorers uh, and decentralized applications. I will be going over Etherscan, Ethereum's uh, on-chain metrics website, uh, along with some other blockchain uh, metric websites. I will also have a deep dive into a specific Ethereum project uh, and I will show you uh, how a decentralized application interacts with uh, certain blockchains. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to jump straight into Etherscan. So up here we can see we're on Etherscan. Uh, Etherscan is the source of truth for Ethereum uh, and the metrics uh, that sit on Ethereum. So we can see we've got a nice dashboard here. We've got Ethereum's uh, price, uh, Ethereum's transactions per minute. Ethereum's gas price, so the medium gas price is the gas price on average uh, it takes to do a transaction right now with Ethereum. Uh, 165 is quite high. Uh, Ethereum users will always monitor the gas price uh, and, and look to optimize uh, when the best time to use uh, the Ethereum blockchain will be. We've got market capitalization here of Ethereum and then some uh, proof of work metrics as well. Uh, below we've got latest blocks that are being mined as Ethereum still a proof of work system uh, as well as the latest transactions uh, for everyone to see on the blockchain. Uh, we're going to jump into some some charts that I like to view on, on Ethereum on Etherscan and I'm going to give you a bit of a update and uh, insights into Ethereum. So Jumping into the charts and statistics, we can see at the top here, we've got some interesting market data uh, charts, uh, Ethereum's price, uh, some market capitalization um, charts here. Uh, and probably most interesting uh, on this top row is the Ethereum supply growth chart. So we're gonna jump into this growth chart just to give you guys an idea of uh, Ethereum's inflation since inception. Uh, and uh, where it's looking to, to go in the future. So uh, at the beginning of the chart, we can see there's quite a steep um, gradient. Uh, this represents um, high inflation of, of Ethereum's uh, emissions. So a lot of Ethereum's being, being released in, into the uh, crypto um, asset industry. Uh, this is being paid out to uh, what's called miners as mining rewards. Uh, but over time, we can see that this curve starts to flatten out, okay? So this is a deliberate uh, ploy by Ethereum um, to eventually become a deflationary crypto asset. Uh, and one of the most recent steps Ethereum has taken you know, towards uh, becoming a deflationary asset is introducing this idea of uh, daily burn fees. So I'm gonna keep scrolling my cursor across uh, and in August this year, uh, was the first introduction of um, the first daily burn fee. So we can see here, uh, 9th of August uh, onwards, we are burning Ethereum uh, on the daily. So that's the Ethereum supply growth chart. Jumping back in, we can see that there's interesting uh, metrics around blockchain data. So this is all to do with uh, daily transactions, uh, ERC, ERC20 transactions. So tokens that sit above Ethereum um, and their metrics, unique addresses, so new people coming into the Ethereum ecosystem, uh, node activity uh, on the likes. Uh, we've also got some um, daily ETH burning. So if you remember that chart I was showing you before, we were looking at um, there, was, there was daily ETH being burnt. Network data, um, nodes and, and network information. So. This chart looks quite interesting. There's a bit of a heat map there of Ethereum um, across the globe, uh, nodes using Ethereum. 
Uh, the last chart we'll jump into on this page is the top DEX um, tracker statistics. So if we jump into this, we can see uh, the DEXs that sit on Ethereum. So a DEX is a decentralized exchange as Matt alluded to in, in the previous uh, episode of uh, DeFi Explained. Um, we can see that Uniswap uh, V2 and Uniswap V3 uh, dominate currently um, in terms of activity. Um, third is SushiSwap, uh, which we'll be having a deep dive into um, very shortly. And then there's a couple others, but they, they seem to be quite negligible. A new, another page that I love to view on Etherscan is the uh, top statistics uh, tokens. So this page is really important as it gives you a good insight on what the uh, hottest um, ERC20 or Ethereum projects are um, in the past 24 hours. So we can see um, Tether, USDC and, and Wrapped Ether um, dominating the top three um, positions. However, underneath we can start to see uh, tokens that um, are popular on the Ethereum blockchain um, at this moment in time. Uh, and we can sort of still get an idea of, of, of what's happening on the Ethereum blockchain. So the meme coins, unfortunately, are still quite popular, as we can see. Uh, and interesting to note, uh, Paraswap, a token that distributed, distributed its uh, tokens last night to um, uh, early adopters via an airdrop. So there's seems to be some, some strong activity around Paraswap as well. Scrolling down here, we can see um, which tokens are popular by transaction count. So um, again, yep, Paraswap is, is quite popular because uh, a whole lot of people have been airdropped tokens. Um, they might be trying to sell them, um, send them to other addresses, uh, etc. That is the macro sort of view of Ethereum and using Etherscan. Um, now I'm gonna jump into a project, a specific project uh, that I alluded to before, and we can, we can use Etherscan to, to drill down into, into certain ERC20 projects as well. So introducing um, Sushi uh, on Etherscan, straight away we can, uh, we can see um, some interesting metrics on the dashboard. So we've got the price, we've got its performance uh, relative to Ethereum overnight. So it's down 3.38%. Uh, a nice button um, that I like to use in Etherscan is this fully diluted market cap um, versus the circulating supply. So fully diluted market cap refers to the total, uh, the total market cap if, if all tokens were um, in circulation. Um, however, not all, all tokens in this instance are in circulation. There's still some yet to come onto the market, okay? So if I click here, it will toggle to the circulating supply, which is uh, the, current, uh, the current value of all the tokens that are currently in the market. So if we toggle back and forth, we can sort of get an idea that there's about 500 million, um, a bit less than 500 million actually, um, that's still yet to come onto the market. Uh, holders, um, if you click here onto the holders, this is also really interesting um, as it gives you a good idea of the, uh, how distributed um, the tokens are amongst holders of the project. Uh, we can see that uh, the, the biggest um, holders of, of Sushi right now are um, the Sushi addresses here, uh, one, two, three, um, we can see that there's an unidentifiable um, Ether address. I'm not sure exactly what that address is and um, probably won't jump into that today. We can also see that there's some um, exchanges uh, that hold, uh, hold sushi for their exchanges providing liquidity. Uh, but yeah, a really interesting um, metric to look at when, when analyzing ERC20 tokens because uh, you can get a good idea of, of how distributed the tokens are, okay? Uh, it says we've got the top 1,000 out of um, 70, 79,435 holders. Uh, you can actually access that whole holder database if you'd like to. You can download a CV, um, CSV file. Cool. Now that we've had a look at what's 
under the hood of, of Sushi on, on Etherscan, why don't we jump into the actual interface of Sushi and, and see what it's all about. So if I click into Sushi, we can see um, we've got this cool interface. Um, Sushi is available on, on multiple blockchains. So we were just um, looking at Etherscan and, and Ethereum. Okay, but if we want to have a look at Phantom, um, have a look at the Phantom blockchain. I'm just going to jump into the Phantom blockchain for you right now so you can see what it sort of looks like. So here we've got a very similar um, interface. However, it's called uh, FTM scan. So this is the Phantom blockchain um, block explorer. Okay, so very, very similar to um, what we were looking at before with, with Etherscan and you've got similar sort of metrics that you can access. Okay, if we go back to the Sushi interface. If I click here, we can see that, um, we can see that Avalanche is also available for um, on SushiSwap. So this is an example of what Avalanche's uh, block explorer looks like. It's called Snowtrace. Uh, we can see Again, similar metrics to, to what I was showing you with uh, Ethereum on Etherscan. Uh, I'm going to show you now how Sushi actually does talk to, to blockchains and, and interacts. So if I click on Harmony here, actually I'll, I'll start on Ethereum. So currently we're connected to Ethereum, but I'm gonna swap to Harmony to show you, to link up to the Harmony blockchain. So my MetaMask is asking me if I'd like to connect to the network, accepted. Um, what we notice here is I've actually got some um, of uh, Harmony's native token one sitting in my wallet, um, 1,474.94. Okay, so I'm gonna perform a swap now. So if I would like to, um, let's say I'm risk adverse and wanna get out of my position in one, I anticipate it going down, I can swap into what's called a stable token, so USDC. I'm just gonna confirm this swap. There we go. It's asking me on my MetaMask if I'd like to confirm, continue. Uh, I'm currently plugged into my um, one of my hardware wallets, so this is a bit of a, a, a privacy wall that I need to pass as a layer of security. Once I enter in my password. Perform, continue. And there we go. I was able to um, perform the transaction. If we click view on Explorer, we can now view. Yes, there we go. We can now view the uh, the transaction on chain. So lightning quick uh, and incredibly cheap yeah, is the, the Harmony blockchain. And there it is all there for you to see. So the transactions um, and etc. Jumping back to Sushi, we can see that I've, I've liquidated my one into USDC because I now hold um, 412 USDC, uh, and that is the uh, demonstration of a, of a standard decentralized swap for you. Uh, I'd like to call out that uh, Sushi is uh, very in innovative uh, and they do believe in, in a multi-chain future and, and they are striving to be a market leader in the decentralized uh, sector of DeFi. Um, as if I click here, we can see an amazing um, feed of, of 13 different blockchains that uh, Sushi can, can plug into, okay? Uh, this is significantly more than the market leader that is Uniswap. So I'm in Uniswap's interface right now, and if I click here, there's only three options, uh, three networks to connect to. So we hope uh, Sushi keeps, um, keeps innovating and, and performing really well. We're a big fan of Sushi uh, at Apollo Capital. Um, but apart from that, that is uh, the end of today's session. Uh, we really hope you enjoyed this episode of DeFi Explained, um, Block uh, Explorers. Uh, as always, we welcome feedback. 
So please provide any feedback you have uh, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Cheers.